uh, to see how I feel and see how the injury heals up completely. Um, you know, I hurt my back, came back, started doing some stuff, and um, you know, ended up kind of uh, aggravating it again. So I just gotta, I just gotta be careful and make sure that I'm uh, doing the appropriate things, rehab and everything, and then taking it from there. You know, uh, and then seeing where where I am, you know, mentally and physically, you know, to to get back into the fight game. So. Um, well, we'll see. You know, I, I'm the kind of guy I always like training. I don't like taking a lot of time off. So, uh, you know, for me, I always feel like I need to be in the gym doing new stuff, doing doing new things, and um, you know that that's going to be a, a tall mountain to climb when I get back. So, we'll we'll see. Factor in all those things, and then I take it from there. You said that uh, June is the timeline. I know you said no surgery, but I know like Nate Corey actually had said you know he wanted to reach out to you to see if you know maybe you'd consider that. Is there, are you 100% against surgery? You just don't want to go through that? Uh, for me, yeah. You know, I, I just don't want to, you know, there's no doctor out there that will say that they operate on your spine that you're going to be okay after. You know, that's just the the repercussions of having surgery. Anytime you, you have to take that into account. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to finish surgery and then come out there paralyzed or whatever. Maybe they have to do it again. That's 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 a brutal uh, feeling, you know, I'm sure. So I, I don't want to experience that. And um, you know, I want to see if I can do it through uh, through training, through rehab, through you know other other means first, and, and then take it. Is it issues you have experienced before while you've been training? I have. I, I dropped out of the first Sam Stout fight um, when I was supposed to fight on the USA versus Canada card um, because of a back injury. Um, going into the Sean Shirk fight, I had a really bad back, so uh, it's something that's plagued me throughout my career, um, early in my career, I should say. Didn't have it for a long time. And then, uh, you know, doing some Olympic lifts a couple months ago, and, and uh, it came back. You know, I had a, a new herniated disc. So. Do you think going from 45 back and trying to work back up to 55, do you think that had a factor into it? Who knows? You know, who knows if that was a factor uh, of, you know, maybe my body was weak and, and uh, I got right back to training maybe too soon. Who knows? What's the actual medical condition that you have? Uh, it's a herniated disc uh, and L4, L5, so uh, that's what it is. And it's pinching on a nerve that was affecting my legs so I just felt weakness numbness tingling my leg and, yeah we know you have the gig now with uh, UFC on FX and doing that stuff I mean you've done commentating you're doing the fuel show I mean hopefully you can come back to fighting but you have a career outside of this I mean are you yeah. satisfied with that I mean obviously your goal is to come back but you do have other options you know yeah for sure you, you know and, and looking back you know I've had a lot of time to think about this and and uh, um I always did, you know, really my main goal as a fighter and as a martial artist was to get better, was was to train with the best people I could find, the best trainers, the best fighters, and man, that was always my dream, above anything else, you know, I didn't get into this to, to make money or be famous or whatever, I wanted to be that guy traveling with a backpack and get to train with the best guys and get better, and, and I really did that, win or lose, for every fight I always improved, always learned new things, which which was really what uh, motivated me every day to go to the gym. Above anything else was learn something new, get better, uh, try, to, try to perfect this technique and that technique. And uh, looking back, I got to face some of the best fighters in the world. I had a good career, and uh, if it comes to that, you know, that I have no regrets. You know, of course, I want to be a champion. And if I go back, you know, that's something I want to be. I don't want to just go back to, you know, to, to make a paycheck or whatever. I'd like to make another run at the, at the belt. And, that, that's always been another one of my goals. Will that, will that play the biggest factor? I mean, let's say June rolls around, you are feeling better, but you're not 100%, and maybe you're going to come back and have to be on that mid-level. Is that going to play into your decision? I've never done anything to be mid-level. I've always, the way that I train, you know, it's uh, my off-season routine is six days a week, you know, two times a day. That's my off-season stuff, you know, so... Uh, you know, I, I keep a, a rigorous schedule and the way that I am right now, and I can't do a quarter of what I was doing before. So um, I'm not going to go in there and just train here and there. I'm not going to train a few times a week. I'm going to do it when I want to do it the way that I was doing it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to hurt myself and I'm not going to be fully prepared. And in this fight game, it's too, uh, it's too difficult to go in there, you know, and, and just train half ass. So you. Uh you can do a lot of fighters do with the opposite, especially in boxing. Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather start at the lower weight classes and go up. You did the opposite. You started at 185 and fought down. Uh, at what weight class did you feel 
your best and what's the difference between the weight classes for you? Uh, 155 was always my weight class. You know, when I was fighting at 185, I was about 174 pounds. Um, you know, so I wasn't even at 185. Uh, when I was fighting at 170, again, uh, I think at the time when I was at 170, I wasn't even making 170 just from the training. So, uh, you know, it 155, uh, I started out not really, I was thinking I was cutting maybe three pounds. Um, and then uh, at 145, that was a brutal cut. You know, I, I gained muscle as I was training over the years. And 55, I started to, you know, have to lose, you know, about six or seven pounds. But then cutting down to uh, 45 was was very, very difficult. The toughest thing I've ever done in my life, again. And uh, 145 was too much. 155 really is my weight class. That's where I felt most comfortable. Talking about Aldo, what do you think of Aldo's performance against Mendes? Um, you know, it, it was a great performance. It was what I expected. Um, you know, Mendez is a phenomenal fighter, a great fighter, um, but was lacking in experience. And, and I, I'm not, you know, not sure he did the proper analysis on a guy like Jose Aldo, but he, he did a, he had a great effort. But Aldo is, is just, uh, he's an unbelievable athlete uh, who is uh, gonna be a difficult guy to beat uh, at 145 and 155. I don't think there's anyone at 145 who can beat him. At 155, he'll have problems. Uh, there's a few fighters, I think, out there who can definitely give him a run for his money and beat him. At 145, there's no one now and there's no one later that's gonna beat him uh, as long as he's there. Gray Maynard was a big factor, and there was a point you had faced in the past. And how big of a factor was Gray Maynard, do you think, in that fight? So a lot of people aren't really giving Gray a lot of credit for helping Aldo. Um, you know, I, I gave him a lot of credit. I, I think, you know, I knew it was trouble when Gray Maynard, who is uh, has more credentials as far as the wrestling game than uh, Chad Mendes, uh, he's bigger, and he's a better striker, and he hits harder, and he's going in there saying that he had a lot of respect for Aldo, and after training with him, just training with him, he had even more respect for him. I knew that was not a good sign when he said he couldn't take him down. You know, that that's going to be tough. Uh, and that's at 50, you know, Gray walks around about 180, sometimes 180 plus from what I hear. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sure Gray gave him not only some very good technical advice, but even ex um, just the confidence you know when you're going against a high level guy like Gray Maynard who's you know top three in the world at 155 you know um, and, and he's uh, you know not able to take him down or he's doing very well against a guy like that that's got to be a confidence booster for, for a guy like Jose Alba. When you see someone like um, like uh, uh, Mendes who's had a teammate who falls Aldo and uh, and he's been training against these leg kicks. Yeah, he's still eating these leg kicks, and you can see after two, three kicks already, he was already hurt. Compared to other fights, you've been in there, you've eaten leg kicks before. What is it that Jose Aldo does different with his leg kicks? Well, he's very good at hiding them. He's very good at setting them up. Um, you know, I'm very used to I'm very used to taking kicks, and I've trained with a lot of great Muay Thai guys in my t in my time. Um, Jose Aldo, it's the way that he sets it up. He hides it. Uh, most guys, you know, they point their foot away and they're going to go for the kick. He actually hides it very well. He'll keep your his toe facing you uh, and he'll just rotate and he won't put it all into it. But he has so much power that he can do it and still get the same effect. He was hitting the inside of my leg and I started feeling him after three kicks. And the inside leg, you feel it a little bit. It's a lot more difficult on the outside. But because I'm a southpaw, he was going inside and uh, didn't really feel it too much during the fight. After the fight, it probably took me about a month to, to recover. I mean, as far as, you know, getting my, my feeling back in my leg. So uh, he's the guy who has a tremendous uh, soccer background. For, and he's done a lot of repetition as far as kicking goes. And same thing with the Muay Thai. Uh, he, he's got a lot of power. I, I was uh, expecting him to be heavier handed with his hands. I didn't really feel that. But with his legs, man, tremendous amount of power. Most powerful kick you've, uh, you've dealt with? Without a doubt. And again, I've fought guys 185, 170. Kit Cope at, at 170, he, he kicks harder by far. Now, if you look at um, Jose, Jose Aldo, especially against Mendes, he threw two or three leg kicks. Again, I'm sure Mendes spent a, a tremendous amount of time preparing for this leg kick. He didn't even set it up with punches. It was a straight up kick. Yeah. Is it that much faster than other fighters? Or? I, I think so. And again, it's the way that he sets his body language. He doesn't he doesn't telegraph it at all. It's a it's a tremendous technique that he uses. It's something that we've picked apart, analyzed, and even used um, on, on our uh, on our game and, and the guy the fighters that I also work with too. So it's uh, it's it's the way that he's setting it up. It's the way that he's throwing it. Uh, typically, most guys, even in the Muay Thai game, they telegraph it. Uh, for for Aldo, he doesn't telegraph it at all, and he and he is obviously very very fast. So that's a, a recipe for disaster, you know. And uh, l looking at you, you obviously. 
you know, there's a lot of intelligent fighters out there, and, and the stereotype of a fighter has not been intelligent, especially when it comes to mixed martial arts. You, you know, you're a very well-spoken guy. You, you're great in front of the crowd. We just saw you out with with the fans talking to the fans. Um, you, you're doing a great job analyzing and as a commentator. Are there any aspirations, other aspirations that you would get into, other other areas that you would like to be in? Man, I, I love to coach, man. There's just, there's so many great fighters that I see out there, and I'm like, man, I'd love to work with that guy. I, you know, I feel like I can help this guy or that guy, and you know, um, you know, my brother does it. Uh, I I love to do it, and and I'd love to see take a fighter, man, from his the beginning of his career and take him all the way up, or take an existing fighter. But I, I you know, I. I don't know what feels better, man. Is going out there and winning, or seeing a guy and helping a guy achieve, um, you know, his goals, and and it's awesome, man. And just seeing a guy in the gym do a technique for the first time, he's like, oh my god, I just hit a triangle, and seeing his face, you know, it's a great feeling, and and uh, you know, because I've been there, and, and doing it for the first time, it's tremendous. So, I love to work with some fighters and work with, you know, I, I have students back in Boston that I work with, so it's it's a great feeling seeing those guys, uh, you know, move up and you know whatever their goals are, whether it's fighting or not, but it's it's awesome. So hopefully we'll get a chance to see you back in the cage and uh, and, and the back heels up. Either way, a, a, on top of analyzing, we will definitely see Coach Kenny. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure, without a doubt, man. Yeah. Thank you, Kenny.